Hi, I'm Irmina Van Dyken, MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain optimum health via a whole food plant-based lifestyle. I'm here at the beautiful Esselstyn Family Farm in Claverack, New York. I'm here because I'm a speaker at the Engine 2 plant stock that they do every year. It's an annual get together where all sorts of experts come in from all over the world to talk about cool stuff regarding plant-based diets. So I'm here, I'm thrilled to be here and hopefully I can give you just a little piece of that Esselstyn Farm vibe. I wanna take some time today to talk about myths regarding probiotics. We've talked in the past about the microbiome and how healthy it is to have diversity when it comes to the amount and type of microbial species that live on and within us. Recently, I've come across some myths regarding probiotics. I wanna take some time to quash them right now and lay those myths to rest. Probiotic myth number one. Probiotics are best taken on an empty stomach. Many health experts promote taking probiotics on an empty stomach. Research studies demonstrate this is not true though. Actually, there's better bacterial survival when the probiotics are taken with food. If you think about it, it makes sense. A healthy meal full of prebiotics, food for the bacteria in our gut, will help nurture the probiotics and assist them making their way to the large intestine, where hopefully they'll make an impact. The best meals to eat with probiotics are whole grain based meals, fruits, vegetables, that sort of stuff, packed full of prebiotics to help your probiotics have food on their way through your GI tract. Probiotic myth number two, don't use probiotics during antibiotic treatment. This myth is founded on the theory that antibiotics will kill all the probiotic bacteria. And while the theory kind of makes sense, this simply is not true. A recent meta-analysis demonstrated a 47% reduced risk of antibiotic-associated diarrhea when probiotics are taken with antibiotics. The same meta-analysis also showed that the probiotics protected the overall diversity of gut microbiota when compared to antibiotics alone. So if you are on antibiotics, take probiotics and take them with food. Probiotic myth number three. Research conducted on one probiotic strain can be accurately extrapolated to other strains within the same species. So bacteria get kind of complicated. Where there's one species of bacteria like lactobacillus, there's many different strains of that bacteria. And each strain has different properties. A really good example of this is the E. coli strain. One strain, the 0157H7, is very harmful to humans. If we get that strain in our GI tract, we suffer from bloody diarrhea and in some cases kidney failure and death. At the same time, many other strains of E. coli have been shown to be commensal, meaning they're very beneficial and improve our overall gut health. And it's just one or two mutations from each other. Another good example of this is lactobacillus. It's one of the best studied probiotics. The strain of lactobacillus called lactobacillus GG is probably one strain of probiotic that demonstrates the most impressive overall health benefits. But that doesn't mean that every strain of lactobacillus is healthy. Those other strains just may not be as well studied or they may be harmful, we just don't know. For example, different probiotic strains differ in their ability to adhere to intestinal mucosa, thereby providing a beneficial intestinal barrier. They also have different methods of adhering to intestinal mucosa, and as a result, they differ in their immune system interaction. As a result, they differ in their methods of preventing pathogen epithelial invasion. Additionally, they differ in their capacity to form antimicrobial compounds. Where am I going with all this? Well, picking up any old probiotic that says it contains lactobacillus may not get you the health benefits you are expecting. So keep that in mind when you're using probiotics to augment your microbiome. Try to figure out exactly which strains are in your probiotic. Probiotic myth number four. A good probiotic strain will permanently colonize your gut after oral ingestion. This is actually one of the most common misconceptions regarding probiotics. Studies actually show probiotics are temporary. If it's a good strain, these bacteria may live in your gut for a few weeks at best. So it's important to know, you cannot recolonize your gut with probiotics, but you can use them as placeholders while you increase your prebiotic intake and improve your diet and allow natural healthy gut bacteria to take place and thrive. Probiotic myth number five. Giving probiotics in supplement form is superior to food forms. This is simply not true. Many foods contain natural probiotics which are just as good as the supplements. Just remember, the key is making sure you consume these with a diet full of prebiotics, food for your bacteria so they can thrive. 
Foods that contain probiotics include sauerkraut, kimchi, miso, tempeh, kombucha, kefir. Mix it up a little bit. Get various probiotics from all these different foods. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Esselstyn Family Farm, and I hope you learned something valuable and applicable to your individual health journey. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. We love hearing from you, so please comment below with your thoughts and questions on the material covered in this video, and let us know what health topics you want to learn more about. Until next time, aloha.